Hello everyone, let's use some extra trig identities. These are addition and subtraction identities. One thing that I just want you to take a look at before we get too far into this is when you see that you are adding two things inside the argument, so that's what you're taking the sine or cosine of, it is not like some kind of distributive property sine of s plus sine of t that is wrong. If you ever see that you're adding something, you need to use this identity. So this is a property that you must follow to do these problems and we're going to be able to get exact values which means no decimals uh, and with like perfect radicals <clears throat> simplified radicals exact values of angles that we've not been able to find exact values of before so let's do one of these together it says find the exact value of the sine of 105 degrees so i think on my unit circle i don't know 105 degrees i know 30 degree reference angles, 45 degree reference angles, 60, 90, I could keep going. Like I'm just trying to think what's on the unit circle. 90, I could, oh, okay, 120, 135. I could obviously keep going here and list the entire unit circle. But what I need to do is if I know this identity, what I really care about is can I find two that add to 105? And I'm like, yeah, those two add to 105, 60 plus 45. So what I'm going to do is say, well, what you want me to find is the sine of 60 plus 45, because that's 105. Now I can use this property to evaluate the sine of 105. <clears throat> so I'm going to just say it's the sine of the first term and then the cosine of the second term. So the sine of 60 times the cosine of 45. Plus, so notice if it's a plus, it follows. That's also a plus. Then you do the cosine of the first angle, so the cosine is 60 times the sine of 45. Now, if you don't know the unit circle, you're done, you got it wrong, move on. Uh, otherwise, probably should learn the unit circle. You have four unit circle evaluations here. So it says the sine of 60, so you think, okay, 60 degree reference angle, I want the y, that's the long leg, that's radical 3 over 2. 45s are radical 2 over 2. Cosine is 60, so if it's a uh, 60 degree reference angle, then we're talking about the short leg. So cosine of 60 is the short leg, that's one half, and the sine of 45 is radical 2 over 2. Now, you have fractions that you are multiplying. There's two of them, but look, they have a common denominator, and their denominator is 2 times 2. So these are both going to be over 4. And when you are multiplying radicals, you can multiply the radicands, the part underneath. Radical 3 times radical 2 is radical 6. And 1 times 2, well, 1 times radical 2 is 2. So that is your answer, radical 6 plus radical 2. Now, cool thing about this, it's a calculator problem as far as like the sine of 105 is something we can evaluate and we can check this. So let me get my calculator going and we'll do, make sure I'm in degrees, the sine of 105. And then I should be able to say that is radical 6 plus radical 2. Oops, divided by four. Hopefully I get the same thing. Maybe I'm talking about. Hey, look at that. Nice. Cool. See, you can check it. Now, this is an exact value. That's the decimal. I don't want that. That's a fine state to round that. Okay. All right, let's do the same thing with the sine of 15. So I have all these angles I can choose from. I could do 45 minus 30, or I could do um, 60 minus 45. It really doesn't matter. So just because I just did 60 and 45, I'm going to do the sine of 60 minus 45 now. This is going to look very similar. I'm just using this property instead. The, the only thing that's going to change is you'll have a subtraction in the middle. So this is going to be exactly the same because it's the sine of the first angle, the cosine of the second angle, except now it's a minus cosine of the first angle, sine of the second angle. So same thing. I'm evaluating a lot of the same values. This is radical 3 over 2, radical 2 over 2, minus 1 half, radical 2 over 2, you pretty much end with the same thing, only now it's going to be radical 6 minus radical 2 over 4. And I'll check that too, just for good measure. The sine of 15, is that this with a minus sign? Hopefully. Oh no. Minus. Hooray, we did it. Okay, so same thing. Almost the exact same problem, I just used the minus sign instead of the plus sign. But you can do this with any angles. If you can combine them to get your new argument, then you can find exact values of things that we haven't found. We'll do the same thing with cosine. 
This one's in radians, so that can be a little trickier. Let's do kind of what we did before. Let's list some reference angles like 30, 45, 60, maybe 90. Now, if these are radians, that's pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2, which if the denominator is 12, I think it makes the most sense to think about that as like you would have to multiply the top and the bottom. That's 2 pi over 12. Here, you'd have to multiply the top and bottom by 3, 3 pi over 12. This would be 4 pi over 12. And this would be 6 pi over 12. I'm trying to just think if they're over 12, pi over 3 is 4 twelfths. 1 third is 4 over 12. Now I can get 1 pi over 12 by subtracting. I can do 3 minus 2 or 4 minus 3. I'm going to do the cosine of, I'll just do 3 pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12. That's 1 pi over 12. But that doesn't really help me because I never talked about pi over 12. So I'll just now be like, oh, well, actually, 3 pi over 12, that's pi over 4. And 2 pi over 12 is pi over 6 because those are what's actually on the unit circle. Now I'm going to use a, the cosine property, but the difference here is it's a slightly different formula. When you're adding, you end up with a minus sign, and this is cosine times cosine minus sine times sine. So it's a little bit different, but you're just following the formula. So this is going to be the cosine of pi over 4 times the cosine of pi over 6. Now, since it's a minus, I'm using this formula, which means it's a plus when you evaluate it. Plus the sine of pi over 4 times the sine of pi over 6. So let's see, cosine of pi over 2, radical 2 over 2, cosine of pi over 6. So pi over 6, that'd be the long leg, radical 3 over 2. Sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So you're, get, you're going to notice these answers all kind of look the same. Radical 6 plus radical 2, and it's all over 4, which is the same answer as the other one we did. But if you think about the unit circle having a very small amount of values like we, we always are dealing with one half radical two over two radical three over two you're going to get a lot of repeat answers because you're combining the same numbers so i'll check this one in my calculator as well but i'm in radians so i need to make sure i click on radians down here and we'll do the cosine of pi over 12 pi over 12 and that should be yep there it is the answer was the radical six plus radical three so 0.965 cool which makes sense. The cosine of 15 is always going to be the sine of 85. Because of the, or I'm sorry, 75. Wait, what are we doing? I guess 1 and 5, same thing. Okay. Find the exact value of the cosine of 75. All right, cosine of 75. So we'll pick two angles that add to 75. How about the cosine of 45 plus 30? So that makes 75. Now I use this property. The cosine of 45 times the cosine of 30 minus the sine of 45 times the sine of 30. Cosine of 45, radical 2 over 2. Cosine of 30, that's the long leg, radical 3 over 2. Sine of 45, radical 2 over 2, sine of 30, 1 half. I'm just evaluating the sine of 45, radical 2 over 2. So this is radical 6 minus radical 2 all over 4. That's the same answer we had before. I can check it. Make sure I'm in degrees, and I'll do the cosine of 75. Cosine of 75 is 0.258, which is that radical 6. Yep, right there, cool. So we see a lot of the same numbers because, again, we're dealing with a finite set of values. All right, let's do a tangent problem. This can be the trickiest thing here. So if it says evaluate the exact value of tangent of 15, all right. So here's the thing. You need to remember that the tangent of 60 degrees is radical 3 and do not use 30 degree reference angles. I'm just going to tell you right now, when you are doing tangents, and only tangents does this matter, do not use any 30 degree reference angles. It always makes the problem way harder than it needs to be. You always want to deal with 60 degrees if you have a choice, and you always will have a choice. Always choose a 60 degree reference angle with tangent. So when you say the tangent of 15, you could do 60 minus 45, or you could do 30, I'm sorry, 45 minus 30. If you pick this one with a 30 degree reference angle, you're going to have a bad time. So I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to use the formula 
but if you pick the wrong two angles, this can be really, really harder, a lot harder than it needs to be. Tangent of 60, okay, so I'm just following the formula now. It's tangent of 60 minus the tangent of 45. And this is all over. One plus the product. One plus the tangent of 60 times the tangent of 45. That's a minus. Okay. So the tangent of 60, that's what I said before, that's radical 3. The tangent of 45 is 1. In the denominator, 1 plus the tangent of 60 is radical 3, and tangent of 45 is 1. So saying times 1 seems like a waste. I'm not going to do that. So you get this answer, which is correct, but it is not going to receive credit because it is not rationalized. You have an irrational number, the radical 3, in the denominator. So we're going to rationalize it. And the way you do that is what we've been talking a lot about, the idea of the conjugate, 1 minus radical 3. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. The conjugate is the same two terms, but with a minus sign. So when you FOIL this, radical 3 times 1, you get radical 3. Radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative radical 3 is positive radical 3. Over, when you FOIL the denominator, 1 times 1 is 1. Minus radical 3, this is the cool thing. 1 times negative radical 3 is negative, and 1 times positive radical 3 is positive radical 3. Positive radical 3 times negative radical 3 is negative radical 9, which is 3. So when you do this, the whole thing that helps you about the conjugates is that the middle cancels out, and now you end up with 1 minus 3, which is negative 2 in the denominator. You don't have to worry about no, any more radicals. In the top, I have radical 3 plus radical 3, so that's 2 radical 3, and negative 3 and negative 1 make it negative 4. So... Now that I've got this, I'm really close. I just can divide everything by negative 2, so I'm just distributing that 1 half. 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1 radical 3, and negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. So that is your simplified, rationalized answer. Let's see how we did. The tangent of 15 is that 2 minus radical 3. Yes, it is, so I know we did it right. But with tangents, those are definitely going to be the longest. I'm going to reiterate, do not use 30-degree reference angles. 60, yes. 30, no. Okay. Uh, let's see. There's maybe one more type of problem. So this is, like, these are practice, but we haven't done one exactly like this. So it says, find the exact value of the sine of 20, the cosine of 40, plus the cosine of 20, sine of 40. So you look at that and you're like, I have no idea. I don't know what the sine of 20 is or the cosine of 40. Those aren't on the unit circle. But if you look at your properties that we talked about earlier, there is this property. And this says the sine of S plus T is the sine of S times the cosine of T. Wait a minute. Sine of 20, cosine of 40, plus cosine of 20, sine of 40. We're going to go backwards. If this is 20 and this is 40, then this is 20 and this is 40. S is 20 and T is 40. So that means I'm asked to find the sine of 60. The sine of 60 is radical 3 over 2. So that whole thing is radical 3 over 2. Sine of 20 times cosine of 40 plus cosine of 20 sine of 40. Radical 3, oops. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. What has happened? Radical 1. 3 over 2. Hey, we did it. All right. Fine. Okay. So that one, I give you the expanded version, and you got to condense it going the other way. So it's the same idea, but you're going backwards. Kind of cool. All right. You've got some practice problems here. I put the key to this on Schoology. Make sure you have all your checkpoints finished. And make sure you hit that like and subscribe.